What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash supernova revenge. Alright, so this story's called, Man Makes Me Endure 12 Hours of Pain. I Destroyed His Career. Note, this was originally posted in Nuclear Revenge, but a commenter made me aware of this thread's existence and said it should also be posted here. So I figured, why not? If you already saw this story on the other thread, how you doing? In my teens, I had to have numerous operations. Therefore, I always ended up at one particular hospital that specialized in my condition. Now, the hospital was high quality, with staff that was very caring and looked out for the patients they had. They gave you essentially the five-star treatment. After all, they were charging our insurance an incredible amount of money, so that probably had something to do with it. But one particular operation I had, it all went to heck. It wasn't like this type of procedure wasn't something I had not done in the past. It was about the third time I needed to have it done. No pressure whatsoever. Essentially, it entailed breaking both your legs, placing rods into them to put them back into the proper place so they would end up growing correctly. They would be in for about a few months to heal, and then they were taken out. During that time, I would have to turn small little handles to reposition my bones according to a pre-printed out schedule given to me by my doctor. It hurt like hell, but it was worth it in the end. Despite how often I had done it, it was still extremely painful, especially for the first few weeks after the procedure was done. Any vibrations would send shockwaves of pain throughout your entire body, regardless of how doped up you were on painkillers. So the doctors took extra care to ensure any trip back home was as smooth as possible, literally. They all understood that without a jet back to your home city, for anyone more than 40 minutes away from the hospital, it was medical required that you travel back home in a med jet. Imagine every single bump you experience when driving for any period of time. Now imagine being sent into shockwaves of 10 out of 10 pain every single time you went over that bump. You get the idea. Now, most hospitals offer individuals a liaison to individuals within the hospital to deal with their insurance. Just have that individual talk to the doctor, and right away they would work out what the doctor wanted with the company. No hassle. We didn't take up that offer because we understood how everything worked, and it was never an issue. But the hospital always offered us one anyway. And yes, these liaisons were not employees of the insurance company, but of the hospital. They were designed to look after the best interests of the patients and justify it to the insurance company. Then our uh, designated liaison decided that our request to not have one was unacceptable and thus he would intentionally intervene at every change he could. He even went as far as to deny our nurse requests for extra pillows because the hospital only allows X number of pillows per person. Despite the nurse literally stating it was fine. But nope, since he was at a higher level, he apparently had final say. When it was nearing our time to leave the hospital, like always, the doctor wanted to bill the insurance for the medical jets because it was medically required. Same old, same old. However, our jackass liaison disagreed with the doctor's assessment that it was medically required, justifying his opinion based upon our insurance company's definition of medically required. Naturally, the doctor flipped his lid and verbally curb stomped the idiot. Listen, simply avoiding pain isn't something that the insurance will cover. It's not medically required to avoid pain. Are you kidding me? You realize this patient would have to drive 12 hours in a cramped ambulance with two broken legs and excruciating pain if they didn't fly? It is absolutely unheard of. You literally would have to have two EMTs escort them back home just in case anything happened. The cost is only marginally smaller than the damn jet. Plus, there is a small chance the rods can become disrupted if anything happens in the car. That's the justification. The odds of any crash happening are not high enough for the company to justify it. This would hurt the company if they keep doing this. Listen, I don't know why on God's green earth you are even arguing with me. This isn't freaking up to you. You are not a doctor. You have no medical training. You are given a goddamn list of the insurance company's policies. And now you think you can properly diagnose what is or is not 
medically required. I've done this for thousands of patients with this very company. Now get your ass back to your office, bill the freaking insurance company properly, and shut the hell up. You work for us, not for them. I was in earshot of this entire conversation. A week later, on the day of departure, we learned what happened when he went back to his office. He had called the insurance company and began going through the proper channels to get the jet approved. However, he began dropping small hints to the rep that in his opinion, driving would also be fine. So naturally, on the day before our departure, we got a call from the insurance company denying the request. I was furious. There wasn't time to appeal the decision. There wasn't anything any of us could do. Even my doctor was stuck because the liaison worked for a different department and he couldn't even fire the guy. He apologized time and time again and ensured the 12-hour ambulance ride would be as comfortable as possible and even told the driver to keep me as medicated as possible to ensure it went well. Naturally, it did nothing and it was the most hellish 12-hour experience of my life. I was screaming the entire 12 hours. The ambulance wasn't even outfitted with a bed. It only had some type of hammock type thing. Two EMTs had to endure non-stop screaming from someone who didn't even belong in the ambulance in the first place. Everyone was furious. Everyone blamed that one man. Everyone wanted him fired. But they had no medical reason to fire him because, according to the union's policies, he technically did what he was supposed to do. The only way for him to be let go was for him to have caused the patient some type of harm that the doctor warned about. So, days after my trip, my doctor insisted that I see a medical professional in my hometown, you know, to ensure nothing happened on the trip. This was like the third time I had done this, so it was a pretty common request I was familiar with. As I was still fuming, this is when I hatched my plan. I knew I was the only one with control over the rod's proper position. I knew having the rods not properly dialed in for a few days wouldn't do any long-term harm and would only result in a lot of pain to dial it back in afterwards. I knew my doctor would be furious if anything happened out of the ordinary, his reputation being on the line and such, and I knew no medical professional had checked my rods to confirm their current setting after the trip. So, I popped three pain pills, waited for them to kick in, and unscrewed every single rod to the lowest setting possible. Just for reference, after the procedure, they end up setting the starting point for these rods somewhere in the mid-range of their settings. Worst pain of my freaking life. I was wheeled into my local doctor with the adjustment notebook in hand. I kept playing dumb, saying I believed everything was going fine, but my legs felt awful, and if it was possible, he could make sure everything was going okay. He began his inspection, and his face went white when he realized where the screws were set. He asked me what setting they had been on when I left the hospital, and I told him, again, he did not look happy. He told me that something must have happened on the trip, and he would need to properly adjust them back into place, and it would hurt like hell, but it needed to be done. The screaming at that appointment was, let's just say, uh, disruptive. I didn't even have to fake it. It was genuinely one of the most painful things I have ever experienced in my life. My doctor was furious as he was up to date on the entire liaison situation. He excused himself after the uh, readjustments of the rods to the back room. I assume he thought I was out of earshot. He was wrong. He phoned my doctor out of state and he had a few choice words for him. How could you freaking let this happen? Do you know how dangerous this could have been? If he had not gotten an appointment with me this fast, his freaking bones would have permanently grown in the wrong place, and he would need another surgery to fix his freaking mess. I don't know what kind of freaking operation you have over there, but there is zero chance I will ever refer anyone in my clinic to you. Do you hear me? How hard is it to control your freaking insurance handlers? Fast forward to my operation to remove my rods back in that specialist hospital out of state. The liaison was not just terminated. Oh, 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 oh no! The liaison got accused of intentionally trying to endanger the life of a patient 
plus lying to the insurance company, plus lying about a doctor's medical assessment for his own benefit. No idea where this last accusation came from. Maybe it was lodged as an additional justification to fire him? I don't quite know all the consequences for his actions. I only could muster up a few details for my doctor. From what my doctor described, the hospital put out a notice to every hospital in the state to not hire this man. Those hospitals apparently also sent out a notice to all the hospitals in their surrounding areas to not hire this man. This ended up resulting in a domino effect that barred him from working in almost every hospital in the country. I wanted him fired. I didn't plan on getting him blacklisted. Nevertheless, I was freaking giddy, especially after my doctor informed me there was no lasting damage for the mistake he caused. Fast forward about four years, and I hear through the grapevine that he ended up having to change professions because of the accusations. Ended up doing some waste management job or something. No idea if it's literal garbage man status or working in a waste management company in a desk job. Note, there are certain parts of my medical condition I had to leave out to stay anonymous, but it's extremely rare and extremely difficult to treat. Most of my doctors need to walk on eggshells to ensure I get properly treated. One of the main reasons my doctors are so passionate and concerned about my treatments. Okay, first of all, you really gotta admire the doctors getting so worked up over this guy. I don't have much experience with doctors other than temporarily going to school to become one, but I really hope that most, if not all, doctors are at least somewhat passionate, like to this level at least. But holy crap, uh, I can't imagine the, the pain. Bones can cause a lot of pain, and as far as I know, they can't really numb your bones to, <laughs> to help with that. And there are so many nerves in your bones. That just sounds horrible, having metal rods through your leg bones. The, the vibrations, man. Holy crap. And that liaison dude, what a piece of crap. He doesn't even deserve a waste management job, okay? Not saying that they're bad or anything. They make some good money. He needs his legs broken. <laughs> This story's called, Bully Kids for Being Gay? Time to put you in their shoes. In my school, during the time I was there, there was a lot of social stigma with being a homosexual within a school environment. No one ever came out publicly due to the amount of bullying and general assery that would follow, so it was a closed shop. I'm personally straight, a victim of bullying for reasons that aren't related to my sexuality, but a victim of bullying nonetheless. I knew I wasn't able to really stop this on my own, so I just moved on and tried to make their lives better through things like programming clubs. I'm well versed in my knowledge of programming languages. During my third year there, I remember there was a particular little heifer whom I will brand Dip for this story, and he was relentless. His parents were strict Christians, but not in the sense of love and peace, more like hate and repent for things out of your control. They would let him get away with bullying the LGBT kids due to the fact that those cigarettes deserve it for going against God. The school would try everything to prevent him, and in their defense, they did suspend him for a few days. But after the crap storm his parents kicked up for this incident, he was acquitted almost every single time after this. One particular incident caught my eye. When he cornered a kid who was rumored to be gay without having even been confirmed and beat the crap out of him, calling him a bundle of sticks intended for burning as fuel and telling him to repent. More so sarcastically, not in a serious sense. I don't remember the details of this case, but I'm fairly certain nothing came of it due to the lack of evidence, but the victim was scarred. I know this because he attempted to swallow a bottle of pills due to his desperation to escape the pain. Frankly, I'd had enough. I began to work on a particular program, which was my first remote access torrent, allowing me to transfer files between computers as well as run commands and admin on their PCs. This was in the before times before people were big on e-safety, which essentially gave me full control. I sent them these remote access torrents in various 
various forms through disposable emails, so they'd have no idea it was me. I then began my planning, downloading various files of gay pornography, not for personal use, and began to transfer it. I always made sure it was in places where they wouldn't ever look. Windows directory, sample videos, the usual, then waited. I remember it was a day when we were all in class together. I took out my laptop, sent a single command which was essentially a function to do one thing. Open it all up. The greatest part about this exploit was that it also forced the sound to play through the speakers, as well as blasting it to full volume. Close-ups of the most depraved, poorly drawn, scat, water sport, yaoi crap. Once that was all open, I just kept resending the command each time they closed it, making sure to only do it once so no one could pinpoint it was being done automatically. Obviously, the school informed his parents, and as strict Christians, who remember, hate and repent, were absolutely freaking furious. If I recall, they disowned him and the local Christian community exiled him from the church, refusing to allow him back in. Without his parents, he had to live with his equally but more accepting and less wealthy aunt and uncle who constantly berated him for being gay despite his protests. It was rumored they signed him up for electroshock gay conversion therapy. At school, he felt the crap storms these kids felt as well, being called gay, beatings left and right. Due to this, he didn't pass any of his exams and, as such, was stuck at a dead-end job for two years of his life. Due to the events in his life up until that point, he took up alcohol as a suppressant for the pain, and as such, was swiftly fired from his job for his ethanol-induced escapades. I'm not very sure where he is now, but I know that wherever he goes, he won't bully anyone ever again. And that is the branding I was looking for. Edit. Most people think I went too far. My intention wasn't really to punish him, more so to show him what it was like. Whether or not that lasted to this day, I don't know. But never saw him bully anyone ever again. Wow, I honestly... <laughs> that's supernova, alright. Okay, first, obviously, bullying anyone at any capacity is scummy and you're a bad person if you do that. That being said, uh, I don't know what to say because a lot of kids that are bullies are bullies because their home life is horrible. And as we can all see, his parents were very horrible people. And I don't know. Well, that's what this subreddit's for. <laughs> Supernova revenge. Uh, I just can't help but think he could have redeemed himself and I don't know. <laughs> Boy, that's that that was intense. Okay, so this revenge is very swift. <laughs> uh, it's called Psychopathic Bully Gets His Head Crushed In By One Of His Victims. This story is from my grandfather and takes place sometime around 1942 in a small town in Idaho. His memory is bad and so is mine, so take most details with a grain of salt. My grandpa was always a tough person, even when he was a child. A bit of a butthole even, but this was the 40s and people were different back then. He was also a small child and that attracted a lot of bullies. There was one bully, however, who was worse than most. His brothers would usually back him up, but this kid came along after his older brothers moved to a different school and left him with his younger siblings. This was the 1940s, so the bully got away with absolutely psychopathic levels of beatings, and he would sometimes involve friends to beat him in a gang. Great-grandfather would not do anything, and he told him to be a man. So, he did. One day, Grandpa hid behind the counter of a building where he knew the bully passed every single day. When the butthole stepped past the corner, Grandpa swung a brick at his head as hard as he could. The kid's skull caved in and he hit the ground. Grandpa described it as being like an ashtray. Grandpa can't remember if he died or just had severe brain damage, but nobody messed with Grandpa after that. Oh boy, um, I, I, I don't know what to say to this. That, that's hardcore. Supernova indeed. Jeez. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.